No. Nah. Well, I, I, pers- I'm, I love saying that uh, I would not have gone to Burning Tree if I knew that it was longer than 90 days. Fact was, I didn't have a choice. Uh, I was at rock bottom and uh, all my <clears throat> options and avenues were, uh, were dead ends. I tried them all and parents had to step in, family had to step in, life had to step in and say that you're going to long-term treatment. Uh, you hear long-term treatment you think in 90 days or you go through enough treatment centers experiences you know the the hustle and bustle and you hear long-term treatment uh, you know I'm thinking uh, I'm certainly in for uh, longer than 30 days uh, I just didn't I was pr- I was thinking 90 days in that area brother picked me up from from jail Incredible circumstances uh, allowed me to to get bailed out that night. Probably shouldn't have. Wasn't. Uh, it was fairly quickly after that. A couple weeks uh, that I found myself in Burning Tree, and I started my eight to twelve story. Uh, my 8 to 12 story is the fact that I needed it. I needed it every single day. I needed a place to uh, take a time out from life, uh, from all my dishonesty, from all my delusion. Uh, I needed to, to re- be refreshed and I needed to try a new way of life. And if you try anything in life new, uh, it's not gonna happen overnight. And when given the opportunity uh, to, to do eight to 12 months of inpatient treatment at Burning Tree, it never, it never excites you. It never, you never are overjoyed to be there, uh, but you reach a, a moment in time, uh, a moment in your stay when you realize that this is exactly where I needed to be. And this is where I exactly I need to do to, to stay sober. Uh, you asked me on October uh, 1st, 2008, uh, if I could ever stay sober or what even, you know, what sober even meant in my life. I didn't know. Uh, I was too scared to find out that, that if you took drugs and alcohol away from me, there wouldn't be nothing left for me to, to live. Uh, drugs and alcohol were my master. I lived according to drugs and alcohol. You took that away from me, that was my solution to everything. My eight to 12 stories I needed every single day. And instead of going uh, through all these 30, 60, 90 day transitional livings, sober livings, whatever it may be, uh, I I got just what I needed in my life. And that's eight to 12 months of inpatient, uh, not being bust in, uh, not going to sober living. Uh, 8 to 12 of true inpatient treatment so I could find a connection to myself, I can find a connection to a higher power, I could get connected with another uh, individual. Um, you know, my first connection was a dog, uh, Pinky, he's a great Dane, and uh, I told my first fifth step to, to Pinky. And from what I know, he, he never repeated what I told him. And that was my first introduction to uh, getting vulnerable. Uh, that was my first introduction to uh, the authentic J. And you know, never once did I think that any of the stuff that I told uh, Pinky that day, that night, sitting in the back, uh, I thought I was going to take that to my grave. Uh, I thought it was unique. And I thought that uh, I needed to be punished uh, for some things. It's not the case. We are not unique. We ne- Our stories are very rarely ever unique. And you know, once you find that connection to another person, and once you find that connection to higher power, you know, you find that connection with you. Vulnerability, authenticity, connection. Tell anyone that listens. That's my eight to twelve story. 